Welcome, everybody, to another edition of BTS Live. That's Behind the Scenes Live, episode 20, which I can't believe it's already episode 20, which is amazing. Uh, my partner in crime, I'm with here as always, Mark Rogers. Hey, Mark, how are you? Episode 20, Marty. We made it. Exactly. I, can you, can you believe it? It's, it's, uh, I can't believe we made it this far. How time has gone by. Yes, from us just kicking this around, saying, hey, we got to do something about this. we got to get this thing started, regardless of whether we're prepared. And, and we actually decided that at like midnight one night, and we said, we're going on the next day. Exactly. And that's a great theme. I mean, uh, it, it was funny. I was on um, a radio interview just um, about an hour ago with a, with a good friend of mine, Marv uh, Dorner. And we talked about the very thing about it was about getting started with video, and um, that was kind of the advice. You know, you hear a lot is just getting started. You know, and this is really the theme for today's show about you. And this we just started a discussion several weeks ago about your kind of your your journey starting a brand new online uh, video show. Now you have plenty of online experience. You've been you know creating YouTube videos for a number of years now on you know about sports and college football. But this is um, your first foray, I think, probably into your own show that with a co-host, kind of a, a regular thing. And you know, you you I think you do it on Blab, Blab.m, which we are broadcasting to as well, as well as all other CDNs. But just the whole saga of getting started with creating a video show. Now, I want to tease it before I throw it to you, Mark. Uh, we do have some footage of you. We talked about how you were a on-air. Sport, uh, sports reporter and sports director at, um, at this particular market was down in Mississippi. And I think you were involved with the show. You were down there during the Mississippi State run to the Final Four, which they crushed my UConn dreams. You know, and that was before UConn ever made it to the Final Four. But, but uh, they did a retrospective, and they invited you to be part of it because you were a sports director during that time, and you had some pieces. So I thought people would enjoy seeing you in your sports reporter days. So we'll show that a little later. Would you give me the, the cue, and, and we'll show that a little later in, in today's show. So stick around for that. But, Mark, without any further ado, um, we're going to talk about how, you know, you, you know, start, came up with the idea, kind of, you know, how you found your co-host, sort of the, some of the trials and tribulations of getting it started and all that stuff. And, and I thought that this could be good information for folks that may want to start their own show. You know, how do you start and, and kind of the journey along with that? Because we talk about 90-10, where 90% of it is preparation, 10% is the actual show itself. So, Mark, you take it away and you kind of kind of start um, kind of where this idea started. So in the industry, what Marty just did is called a tease. So if you would like to see me from 20 years ago, uh, you'll, you'll see that in just a few minutes. So back to the Mark and Macy show. So... Marty and I have talked a number of times about my previous experience, which uh, includes uh, 10 years in local markets as a sports reporter, anchor, and for six years in Mississippi as a sports director uh, of a department. So don't confuse that with being a director of a show uh, in the control room, basically a sports director running, running the sports department and also being the um, on-camera anchor uh, for the 6 and 11 uh, weeknights. So... That would have to be the best job I ever had. Throw the money aside, throw uh, the peripheries aside, just in regards to having a job and coming in and executing a job day to day. Having the run of a sports department was great. On air television. So that's my background. That's my experience. But now launching content on the internet and doing it the new way. Um, you understand that the two worlds barely overlap. There, there is some overlap in regards to presenting yourself on camera, of course, and that's my experience. But in terms of dealing with the Internet world and what goes on now versus traditional television, broadcast television, completely different. So I could only take so much expertise and experience from what I had previously and apply it to what I'm doing now uh, with the Mark and Macy show. So 
the Mark and Macy show is kind of running parallel with our show. I think we're coming up on our 20th episode. Oh. So, oh, is, is was, it that, uh, that many so far? Yeah, I was foolish enough, Marty, to start two shows in one week. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Let's just dive in. You, you know my, my approach to this is just uh, click record and start going. Exactly. So that, uh, that didn't hold me back. So in addition to starting this with Marty and him bearing the brunt of the production side of me just coming on here and talking most of the time, but uh, we've got big plans about what we want to do with this. Uh, at the same time, I've always wanted to start from the time I started on the Internet, on YouTube and other platforms, to start a show with a co-host. And I think there's a certain dynamic that just works, and I've talked about this uh, in what we could call the first version of explaining the Mark and Macy uh, show experience. Uh, I always thought that, that there was a particular dynamic that you have in having a male and a female co-host, and there's a reason why most shows do it that way. Uh, and, and especially from a sports perspective, to get a female perspective is, is rather interesting. So you're going to have to go back about three or four episodes yeah, probably, uh, in right. regards to my, my selection of a host and uh, laying the groundwork for content and approach and getting on the same page. And there's a lot more to it than you would think in regards to making sure that you have the same vision, that you have the same mindset, that you're understanding each other and anticipating as many issues and decisions that are going to be made before you get to them and you disagree. Now, you're not going to be able to do that top to bottom. You're going to hit some things that you never anticipated, and we certainly did. But we at least got on the same page in regards to what we wanted this to be from day one, and that's made the ride rather smooth. Uh, we have had very few issues, really, if any issues in regards to uh, the relationship building and the building out of the show. So I talked about that, the selection of the host and the building out of the show, selecting topics, selecting content, uh, trying to have at least a vision of building a brand. Talked about that a few weeks ago. Today I'd kind of like to talk about what, where we stand right now, what we're doing right now. And this has actually been difficult as well because Marty and I talk about it all the time. The biggest challenge that I find is not necessarily resources, money, uh, maybe some other people would disagree me with me, talent. Uh, the, that's the very important. The biggest challenge though. is time. <laughs> that's, that's the big challenge. And yeah. most of us have other work. We've got a full-time job. We have other obligations with family. And then things just pop up in life that you have to deal with. Yeah, let and me just interject real quick. I mean, that you raise a very good point about the time thing because, again, the 90-10 rule where, you know, a lot of the stuff that you do to prepare for the show, nobody ever sees. And that's got to come from somewhere. And you work, you work a full-time job at ESPN. I mean, that, that takes a huge commitment right there. Then you're trying to produce quality content. So, yeah, there's no misnomer there. I mean, that this is something that I think has really got to be emphasized is that if you really want to do quality, the preparation is the key. And just because no one sees it doesn't mean it's not important. I don't have a day that goes by, I don't think, that somebody has a suggestion for me on YouTube regarding either, whether it be this show or most of the time it's uh, Mark Rogers TV, my college football um, audio and video podcast, where they have suggestions. You need to do this. You need to do that. And not to discount those ideas because uh, they're, they're valid thoughts. Uh, it's just that 49 out of every 50, I know that I need to do that. I, that's already on my radar. It's on my to-do list. I just haven't had the time or taken the time to focus in that area. I, I think I'm, I'm hoping I'm becoming much better at saying, you know what, these eight things that I'm doing right now need to go to the back burner because I need to focus on getting this established. And even though the product, the content, may take a slight step back for a week or two based on what people see, uh, in the long run it's going to be better off because I'm establishing uh, this. I, I'm coming up with a better operational aspect to, to take care of this that's going to pay off down the road. So yeah, sometimes like, like you have to small steps are so important. You know, a lot of people, we, we talk about this in previous shows, Mark, where a lot of people, the roadblock is just getting started because they're looking at the end product too quickly. And really the idea is to get started and then build gradually as you go. What you really want to you know, do is, and again, like you're doing, learn from your past shows 
and make those steps. I mean, we, we, we've seen it here in our 20 episodes here. We've had our challenges, and but it's again making those small steps and always improving. And you know what my mindset is. That's difficult for me to do because I want to crank out content. Yep. So instead of doing three videos on a particular day, maybe I do none or one, and I get a lot of other things done that's going to help the product and, and the branding down the road, but it's not necessarily seen by anyone today. And that, and that fights against my nature. My nature is just crank out content like nobody's business. Uh, but that's only gotten me so far, and now I need to take steps uh, to, to build the brand and build the business and operational side out. So when it comes to the Mark and Macy show, and I, I'd like to thank uh, and give a shout out to Walter Knight Rider, because man, you talk about a loyal, loyal contributor and fan to the show. This guy, uh, and there's been a few times where we've had to switch up uh, times because we usually shoot at 645 on Blab uh, on Thursday nights and, and something's happened where we've had to push it back or move it and, and he's right there following us. So Yeah, I, uh, I want to add my uh, two cents for Walter too. I mean, this is what it's all about, Mark. You know this when you're doing social social video, building the community and the appreciation. We ha I mean, it's just that's what makes it really fun for us. I mean, we see people in the chat right now, and I got it over to the side here, and you know, I will jump in. You know, I know Mark's got to leave a little early right at the show, but I, but I will try to jump in on Blab little little post show. But I mean, the community is great. I mean, we we take to the Facebook group and and we we discuss there, but and we we see each other all the time during the week. But that is huge for us, both of us, Mark. And you bring up a very very good point with that, certainly. Yeah, and I'm not going to uh, discount uh, other people who have uh, yep. been, been great supporters, so I, I can't uh, uh, think of or name everybody, but uh, Walter definitely stands out. Knight Rider has been great. So basically what we have going right now is it's the Mark and Macy show. We're on uh, Blab on Thursday nights at 645. We have started a YouTube channel. So the first six or seven shows we placed on my platform on YouTube. And you know what we've seen? You talk about taking a step back. Those shows got as many as 600 views. Since we've started our own YouTube channel and placed the shows there, do you know who is watching those YouTube videos on our channel? No. Uh, next to nobody. But we know oh, that that's the best way to go, is to establish our own YouTube channel with our branding and not just throw them and having them get lost amongst all my other content on my channel. So because of the subscriber difference and because of the traffic, uh, I'm guessing that we're having an issue there. Yeah, but, and, and, Marty, and also, like what you said, Mark, I mean, you raised a good, another good point there. It's like you got to start somewhere. And and patience and persistence has a lot to do with it. And in the beginning, you're you're going to hear crickets, you know, because nobody knows you're there. But as your content gets out there, that's how you kind of build up. And it's you know, and, and you picked a great topic because you're high, very very interested in it. You're very passionate about it, and you're more likely to do it for a longer period of time because of that. And frankly, in the beginning, you had nobody watching. When you started on YouTube, nobody watching, and you build it up, and you start making these relationships, and it gets even better as you go on. But yeah, launching a new show is tough because you kind of got to build it all over again. And I've really got to credit Macy here because her patience exceeds mine. Because Marty, you know, every so often I'll, I'll jump on it or I'll make a comment to you and say, you know, I need this many views or I'd like to see this. I've seen this much growth, but I haven't seen that hockey stick uh, effect yet or something like that where she's she she gives no no notice to the views the number of views if i if i recognize okay we're not getting this what can we do she she's like this is a long haul just let's ride it out it's going to be she's more concerned with how good is the show yep and and, and and i'll tell you mark that's a great way to be i mean and, and talking to the folks that are watching and interested in starting their own shows that's a great way to be because you have to start somewhere, you know, and in the beginning, you're not going to get that many people watching your show and it's going to be, you're going to be talking to nobody, you know, and that's why we always say, you know, pick something you're passionate about, pick something, you know, that you can do for a long period of time, you know, and, and I think the advice is very, very true. Avoid, I would avoid looking at your stats because, you know, it might get you depressed in the beginning, but, but that's just part of the process. 
and it's also sporadic. So you, you get some hope or maybe you get a little bit too optimistic because one show jumps out there. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a show with about 400 downloads, uh, audio downloads, a couple weeks ago, and then that tapered back a little bit, and you, you get a little bit of false hope. That, that's, that's a great indicator mm -hmm. that, that, that the potential's there and that you're starting to get some, some traction, and I believe that we are. Uh, another thing that Marty definitely helped me with in regards to posting Facebook videos to Facebook and posting YouTube videos, obviously, Native. to YouTube. Yep. Most people take YouTube videos, they post them to Facebook. And that was something that I wrestled with in looking at the numbers because I'm thinking, I want the YouTube numbers to be at a certain point. Why wouldn't I be posting a YouTube video so that that gathering of people that I'm showing that to are jumping on the same version of that show? Yeah, but I mean, just, just to that. interject there a little bit, Mark, uh, yep. with the U with the native video, I know that that um, YouTube. I mean, well, YouTube certainly Google they they want people you know they want native video on their own platform, but use Facebook. Mark brought up uh, they are making a special play here. So I, I you know right now they're over indexing for for video and and even live video even more, but their own native video. So if you have the opportunity. You know, upload that native video, and I think you'll get at least for the time being, without having to pay for it. But I think that that's going to show some good results. And Mark, you, I'm, you know, that's exactly what you should be doing. Yeah, and, and you mentioned uh, chemistry, camaraderie, those those sorts of things that that seem like okay, I'm a capable person, I know sports, I've been a veteran in the industry, here's somebody with uh, talent who's very involved, engaged, really wants to, 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 to get after this as well. This should be easy. Well, it's not easy. And uh, I thought we had pretty good chemistry and rapport right out of the gate, and a lot of people noted that as well, and I appreciate those comments. What's funny is that uh, I'm building a best of reel because I have some ideas, both Macy and I, in regards to marketing this and also uh, making uh, some type of a reel, like a five to eight minute reel that we can show to other platforms and possibly get out there uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, what was funny is it's been painstaking to go from show one on through because I thought after a couple shows, wow, we we really hit it off. We we would talk at the we would talk for at length before the show, and we talk for an hour, two hours after the show. So so um, we were really into this, and we seemed to click and and had fun talking. And so I thought, and that's the interesting thing about watching something immediately or experiencing it live versus then looking at it in the aftermath months later. Those first uh, five or six shows I've gone through <laughs> seem to be pretty brutal. And well, isn't so that, hopefully, it's funny, isn't that like for everybody? And that's what stops people is they're afraid. Oh man, this is going to be brutal. It's not going to be very good. It's like, well, no, it's not your finished product. It's it's not where you start. It's where you end. I mean, you're going to start. It's going to be rough. I mean, when I started, it was rough. You know, we continue to improve. For you, even, you're a professional on camera. And you talk about the chemistry. I mean, even for someone like yourself, creating something new, it takes a while to get going, right? To kind of get your sea legs under you, you know, as from from that particular show. You know, take this into consideration, Marty. I heard Colin Cowherd say this a couple of weeks ago. He was talking about he 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 loves to take um, everyday experiences and relate them to what's going on in the sports world. And so he basically said that sports franchises, with all the money on the line these days, are quick triggered compared to what they were years ago and there are famous coaches all over the place legendary coaches who if they would have been evaluated after a year or two they would have been fired and who knows if they would have ever had the chance to show their ability but in this day and age you don't win for a year you don't win for two years you're gone because there's too much money riding on the line nobody's patient and he was talking about building a rapport and building a brand and he was then relating that to his own show, which launched sometime, I think, early last fall. And he was talking to his, his sidekick. She's not really a co-host. Uh, she's kind of on the side, does the headlines. But they, they banter and talk. And he said, what did it take us? It took us probably three or four months to build rapport. And we're talking about two people who are professionals yep. at, at near the top of the industry, at least I would consider him. Oh, yeah. Consider that they're on three hours a day 
five days a week. And then in addition to that, they're in the same studio, so they have that ability to build a rapport. They're going to production meetings. They're together five, six, seven hours a day. Yeah. And it took them three or four months. Every day they're together. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. You just said three or four. It's not, I think some people think it's like tomorrow or like the next show or whatever. And, and you, again, really good point, Mark, that they are professionals. I mean, Mark, Colin Coward, I mean, he comes from ESPN. He's working Fox. He's had national radio experience for years. You know, I'm sure his, I, I, I'm not, I don't know his, his, his co-host's name, but I'm sure she's had plenty of experience. I mean, they're not getting that level without experience. And it still takes the pros time to get that chemistry down, you know, including yourself. I mean, you've had the same experience. Yeah, and I heard that. And, and Macy, being the person that she is, I told her that story. And then she told me a few days later that she searched the Internet looking for that comment. She, she just wanted to see it for herself. And, that, and that's how she is. She's like, oh, I found that. All of a sudden, I get a text. I found that comment by Colin Cowherd. I, I found it on the Internet. And she and uh, I just wanted to point that out because we're, we're both conditioned to be very hard on ourselves and our performance. And I think that's a good thing to an extent. But we had to cut ourselves some slack to say, here are two frontline professionals. They're together six, seven, eight hours a day. They do this five days a week. They're on the air three hours a day. They've been say stating that they didn't get it really synced in and clicking for three or four months. We've done, at that point, 12 or 13 shows that are half hour, an hour long, and then consider the support staff that they have and the preparation for that show where Macy and I basically have a quick conversation to get each other on the same page and click record and go. So, so there's a huge difference there. And so we had to cut ourselves some slack to say, hey, you know, th this is fine. This is good. It's coming. Absolutely. And, uh, I, I want to point out a comment. I, I love um, Stephen Haywood, the tech buzz, and, he, and he's being – sarcastic he goes what i thought everything was numbers you know I've, I've all about the numbers and it, it couldn't be more true I and mean, we talked about this earlier and and steven knows this and he's been doing it a long time almost 10 years to get to his level and again that's what we talk about it folks i mean it takes a long time to get you know it's a building process and that's why you hear a lot of not just from me you hear it from a lot of people you know, pay, uh, I talk about patience and persistence, you know, as far as the long road, but also the passion and the knowledge for the subject matter, because you're going to, if you, in order to build something really, you know, uh, substantial, it just takes a lot of time to do. So, I mean, that you got to have patience, you got to persistence and all that stuff. So I mark you, I mean, you're going through the same thing. I mean, you, when you started on YouTube, you know, it was crickets and now you're building up and you're forming relationships and you're, you're now partnering with other sites and there's some exciting things happening for you. And same thing now when you're launching the Mark and Macy show. Yeah. So there, there was a, a time there probably about six weeks ago where Macy got all excited and all of a sudden she was building all these things out, uh, meaning YouTube channel, uh, website, Twitter page, like in a day. And she went after it after uh, a period of time and, and built this stuff out, which was great. Uh, we're now learning that, okay, we're kind of taking a step back, like we talked about a few minutes ago, evaluating what we can do and not necessarily wanting to do a bunch of things that we can't handle and control and put our best foot forward on and saying, okay, why don't we pare down these 11 things to three things that we can make sure that we are giving the, the, the right amount of attention to and we're going to be there. And when people uh, go to whether it be the Twitter or the website, that it's up to date, that it's, that it's formidable and it's not just haphazard and we're jumping all over the place trying to keep all this stuff going that we can't because, again, time's a big limitation. So we're, so we're taking it slow and making sure that what we're doing is is going to be consistent and people can count on it absolutely i couldn't agree more um and i and i know we're getting up against time here so i do want to i do want to i know i teased <laughs> this before and mark's smiling i know i teased this before mark and you know what's coming here um this video um 
of Mark, uh, you know, we talk about it in the show how your on camera, that's the whole genesis of the show, how your on camera experience was kind of part of the whole genesis of the show. But Mark, you do you want to set this up? I mean, I didn't, I know I didn't show it to you, but what I did was I took some selected clips of you on camera and just you describing it from the newsroom. You want to uh, set it up as far as what you did at ESPN to be part of the special, and then I, I can play the clip. So in 1996, the Mississippi State basketball team advanced to the Final Four for the first time in school history and for the only time in school history, a historic run that was not expected or anticipated, as Marty talked about off the top of the show. So I was uh, the sports director at WCBI in Columbus and Tupelo, Mississippi at the time, and therefore I made all the stops with the basketball team and was covering them day to day throughout the entire season. Then that gets amplified and concentrated when you get into a tournament situation. So I was on the flights. I was there at the hotel. I was covering this team from the, their last SEC championship stop in New Orleans to Indianapolis to Lexington, Kentucky to New York and the Final Four. So that was 20 years ago. So about a month ago, I was uh, contacted by my former director and producer, great people, great friends from a long time ago, and they wanted me to reminisce because they were putting together an anniversary special of that team, and they wanted some of the key contributors outside the actual team and coaches to, to talk about their memories. So that was uh, an amazing experience, really jarred my memory to try to come up with some things uh, because it's been a long time. So they put together an anniversary special. I cut an interview piece from the newsroom at ESPN with no one prompting me, which... In retrospect, I wish I would have had a conversation with somebody because it came off okay, but I would have had much better stories to tell had I gotten into a conversation with somebody. But I basically just sat in a chair in front of a camera in the ESPN newsroom and just talked and then stopped, talked again, and I just... Uh, did well, I, I will so say this. I think you're being used. modest as far as how it came off. I, I, I can understand that how difficult that would be because you don't have the, the interplay with, uh, you know, like in a, a live interview situation. He did great, and they, they, they piece it together well. I'm just going to show – this clip runs a little, just shy of two minutes, but it'll give you some idea of Mark and kind of the story of – a little bit of the story of, of Mississippi State and the run to the Final Four. But it shows Mark in his early days on the air, and I think you guys will get a kick out of it. So, Mark, I'm not sure if you're going to hear the audio because of audio routing, but the folks watching – on the HD streams and Blab will hear it. So let me, let me go to that clip now. Mark Rogers, I was at uh, WCBI from 1994, a sports reporter and anchor, and also a sports director from 1995 to 2000. They had all the makings of a really good team. Eric Dampier, Dante Jones, future NBA first round picks, Daryl Wilson. We knew it was gonna be a really good team. To me, the core of that team in terms of defense, specifically defense, was Marcus Bullard at point guard. He was suffocating on defense. Joining us now is WCBI Sports Director Mark Rogers. And Mark has been up in the cold weather, sometimes snow, sometimes sleet in Lexington, but it looks like you have a pretty day up there now, Mark. There's no other place like Rupp Arena. So for me personally, to, to go to Rupp Arena, the, the mecca of college basketball, Kentucky basketball, and I know the Bulldogs felt right at home. They are the underdog. But they feel good because uh, nobody expects them to win, but they definitely know they can. not WCBI Sports Director Mark Rogers is live in Lexington with the Bulldogs. Then they faced Cincinnati, and they were an underdog again. As the two-seed Cincinnati came in, a big bruising physical team, uh, Bob Huggins exuded uh, force and power. They physically intimidated teams. I learned more basketball from Richard Williams than just about anyone. Uh, I can think of. To win the national championship, you have to win six ball games. That means there's two left, and you wonder if the Bulldogs have two victories aside. UMass had John Calipari and Marcus Camby, the player of the year. So despite not having a big historical basketball tradition, they were expected to be there. Uh, Syracuse, Jim Beheim, basketball tradition, big power from the east. They were expected to be there. And, of course, Kentucky was the best team in college basketball with Rick Pitino on the sideline, so they were expected to be there. But Mississippi State is a five seed, uh, a team that struggled for the first half of the season, not expected to be there. Wow. That was something else, <laughs> to say the least. Bring back memories, Mark? <laughs> oh, boy, that was a long time ago. Yes, that brings back memories. And, and we were talking about this a little bit the last time you and I were on air in regards to the things that go on behind the scenes in producing 
live television and then take that to the nth degree of it being live news television, in this case sports television, when you don't know what's going to happen, you don't know what the time limitations are going to be, and you're on the road. So once you take that outfit on the road, you don't have the, the security of the studio, you deal with weather, you deal with technology more so because it's not in the plant and it's not established. It's we're just hooking it up right now and we got to go. And uh, then we talked about uh, the, the satellite truck uh, configurations and, and having to work with other stations and having the time limitations of editing and other other production trucks owned by other companies and and uh, you may have 18 minutes to, to cut your story for the six o'clock news and and then doing the live shots that you talk about great experience in terms of just knocking it out and just full throttle you get up in the morning you leave the hotel you hit the arena, you go to practices, you go to news conferences, you talk to players and coaches before and after. Uh, I was interviewed by national media and other local media outlets about the Mississippi State basketball team, so that was a great experience that I had not uh, undergone before. And then getting ready for the noon news, the 5 o'clock news, the 6 o'clock news, the 11 o'clock news, and doing that over and over and over every day. There, there was, uh, and, and this was at a time when local news wasn't doing a whole lot of live remote shots at a consistent basis, on a consistent basis. And to throw the satellite truck on the road and the microwave truck uh, was uh, an ordeal and a costly thing. So news uh, rooms and news departments were weighing the costs of being live and being in the moment versus the cost of the actual monetary concern of doing that and fortunately I had a news director in a news department that let me take a truck on the road whenever I wanted to and I was doing stuff every and you talk about and this is probably helps me get to the point where I'm at now is that I was doing live sports casts on the road constantly uh, from baseball games from football practices from all over the place and uh, that was a great experience and really threw me into the fire because before I went to Mississippi I didn't work for a news station that had the capability to go live and, and do live reports from the scene. And, uh, oh boy, to, to see the first uh, 20 or 30 of those, I wouldn't want to right now. I would cringe. But, man, you talk about trial by fire. you got to spit it out, and you got to be on, on point. And um, sometimes uh, involving subjects that you had little knowledge and experience of, but, uh, and, and then things would change and you had to adapt and, and be flexible and, and uh or interviews wouldn't show up that were supposed yeah. to show up and this is and all the days before five minutes to fill and this is mid 90s this is barely internet days i mean the mid 90s you know i mean i don't think your station had a website when you're were there or they may read but a lot of people are just kind of launching and this was certainly before the days of any kind of social media you know so and all in again the expense like you mentioned totally different today where you can bring your phone and stations get people to send, you know, high quality up to 4K video from your mobile device. It's a completely different world. So uh, that was fun to see. Uh, I, I want to wrap this up. I know you have to go, but I, but before you do, I'm just going to point out a couple things. things. Uh, we have our Facebook group uh, behind the scenes live, uh, but there was a change uh, in our group. I uh, just want to make you aware um, if you go to Facebook, Dot com. Let me just throw up the graphic here. Uh, let's see. Be Actually, let's see. Facebook Live. Here it is. So, facebook.com slash group slash BTS Live Show. And uh, we welcome everybody to join if you're interested. Uh, it's about the show and it's about the community, you know, and video production and that type of thing. Uh, it's, a, it's a small but growing community. We kind of had to start over a little bit uh, due to some other circumstances. And one thing I do want to point out, um, uh, well, I'll get into that later because I, I don't want to hold Mark up. <laughs> but uh, the other thing I want to point out is uh, our, let's see, BTS Live. This is our website. Uh, so this is where you can go and see the show today. We stream live. We stream live 24-7. So when we're not live, we are streaming our replays, our, our last uh, recent shows go on there as well. Eventually, that will be a full-fledged site. Right now, it's a, uh, 
it's a landing page. It's just a matter of finding the time to do it. But uh, that's that's our home, uh, and the Facebook group is kind of an extension of that um, as well. Um, I do want to promote um, Stephen Stephen Haywood, the Tech Buzz, and we'll get his uh, lower third up there. The Tech uh, He has a show tonight. Um, pre-show starts at about five thirty p.m. Uh, weekly roundup. The actual show starts at six. Um, and also on Tuesday nights, uh, it's broadcast now, 5.30 pre-show, 6 o'clock show. Please uh, check that out. Um, Steven uh, is tremendous. And he, he gets, you know, I think he gets embarrassed when I talk about him all the time, but I, but I do. He's, he's, he's a terrific guy, great member of the community, and someone that everyone should be looking up to that want to do this uh, type of thing. The last thing I want to um, promote is Mark Rogers' YouTube channel. That is uh, YouTube.com. Search Mark Rogers TV. You'll find the Mark and Macy show right there in all its glory. Um, and so, yeah. So, Mark, you're on, I think, Tuesday or, um, no, no, Thursday nights, right? Thursday For the Mark night. and Macy show. 645. 645. Excellent. Very good. Um, and I do want to mention, I know, Mark, you probably have to go. So, if you have to hop off, I can just close the show <laughs> I appreciate it, Mark. You're going to hop on. I'm going to say a couple words at the end here that I want to get on the main show. But, Mark, it's been a pleasure as always. Uh, we'll we'll um, start this again next week. Yes, there's so much more to talk about, and uh, I'm going to get a tooth fixed. So. Absolutely. All right, Mark, <laughs> thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Right. It was great to see you. Um, so before we close, I, I did want to mention um, the, uh, YouTube, the uh, Facebook group again. Uh, and let me bring that up here. Uh, um, this is a new group. Um, so it's facebook.com slash groups. Let me just put it up there. Slash groups slash BTS live. Uh, we did have to restart it again, guys. Um, so if you're in any other group, um, it's up to you if you want to stay. But this is the actual official group for the BTS live show. Uh, and I will say this, um, you know, it's funny when we started it, um, it was some great interaction there on the group. And, uh, you know, I think I, I'll leave you with this. I think it's important um, that I learned a valuable lesson. I think it's important that you own your content and you make sure uh, who you're partnering with has the best, has your best interest at heart. And I'm just getting back to the, uh, has your best interest at heart. And uh, I made a mistake and, uh, you know, again, as far as I, I would say this and make sure you know who you make your administrators. Uh, so in our group now, I'm the administrator and Mark, uh, and people are more than welcome to come in, but make sure you own your content, make sure you, who you know who you're partnering with. Um, and I had a bad experience. So, um, and you know, again, enough said, I'd rather be proactive and, uh, that's a new group. So that's why we had to make that transition. Anyways, thanks everyone for hanging out with us. Uh, uh, our late start <laughs> it always seems every week we get a late start but again thanks for Stephen Haywood for coming on and straightening me out uh, again I learned something new check my Skype settings that would help right um, and I will try to pop in a little bit on um, if you hang out on um, blab I'll be happy to pop in as soon as we we finish this recording and we can continue the discussion there uh, but I appreciate everyone st uh, coming Again, btslive.com is where you can see us 24-7 uh, replays. Uh, again, tonight, 5.30 p.m. for the pre-show for the weekly roundup on the techbuzz.net. Steven's great, great show. If you guys are interested in tech, that's a great uh, place to hang out. So until next time, 2 p.m. Eastern time next Monday, this is Marty McPadden. Thanks for watching, and we will see you again next week. <laughs> Thank you.